Hi Troops, Koala here, welcome back to the ArmorCast channel, and welcome back to another episode of Koala Explains, the series where we take an in-depth look at different specific aspects of military hardware and technology from across the world and throughout history. In one of our channel's more popular videos, we discussed NATO's brevity codes, used by many of their country's air forces, to succinctly give information like aircraft types and locations, weapon launches, and overall pictures of the battlefield. Well, today's topic is sort of along those lines as well, and that is NATO's reporting names for Russian and Chinese military aircraft. For example, if you've spent any time at all looking into the military space, you'll most likely have heard the Su-27 fighter referred to as a flanker, or seen the Mi-24 helicopter go by the name Hind. See, these names weren't given by the Soviet Union. Actually, the Soviets didn't often give their aircraft official names at all because they're boring. Instead, these are actually NATO's handles, given to help NATO forces identify what they're fighting, rather than having to learn Russian names and designations. It's a practice that actually dates back to the Second World War. So I hope you've all gotten some food and drink, and you're ready to pay attention for when you inevitably find yourself in air-to-air -air combat. Because in today's lesson, we're going through how and why each aircraft, as well as missile systems and other equipment, get the names they've received, and some of the rules that'll be used to define new ones going forward. This video is proudly brought to you by Air Models. If you're looking at any of the aircraft in this video and thinking, God damn, I want one of them for my own, then check out Air Models at the link down below. They support the channel and my crippling addiction. I want, I want one of each of them. Is, is that something? Can you guys just pay me in models? Like, is that Since 1962, the United States Aircraft Inventory has had a comprehensive designation scheme for all its aircraft based on type classification, with F for fighters like the F-4 Phantom or F-15, B for bombers like the B-52 or B-2 Stealth, C for cargo aircraft like the C-130, C-17 and C-5, and so on. The Eastern Powers, however, have stuck to a system of designating aircraft by manufacturer rather than role creating different designations for the same class based on who designed the aircraft. While this might seem a wee bit strange, the US actually used a similar system back in World War II, as did Nazi Germany with the likes of the Heinkel HE-111, Focke-Wulf FW-190 or Messerschmitt Me-262. In Russian service, all MiG aircraft were built by Mikoyan Gurevich, later just Mikoyan. All Su aircraft from the Su-30 fighter to the Su-25 attack aircraft were built by Sukhoi, and the Tu-95, Tu-22M, and Tu-160 all came from Tupolev. Any Russian helicopter designated MI, like the MI-17 or MI-24, were built by the Mil Moscow helicopter plant, while Kamov is responsible for the Ka-27 and Ka-50 and 52. It's important to remember that these designations are based on design bureaus, not necessarily manufacturing plants or companies. So while Urquhart is responsible for building the Su-30 family, or Rostvertal, the Mi-35, the aircraft retain the prefixes of their designers. Likewise, despite the merger of Sukhoi with Mikoyan and Tupolev to form the United Aircraft Cooperation in 2006, subsequent aircraft designs again keep their designer bureau's codes. The main two companies building fighters for the Soviet Union throughout the Cold War were of course Mikoyan with the MiG-21, MiG-25 and MiG-29, and Sukhoi with the Su-27, 30 or 33, both companies that only built fighter aircraft. In the earliest days of the Cold War however, and back into World War II, there was also Lavochkin and Yakovlev to think about, as well as the Chinese designers Shenyang, Chengdu, Jian and Nanchang. Because of this, Russian aircraft designations give no information about the aircraft itself, and so the US and NATO create their own reporting names for each aircraft, allowing pilots to easily identify the type and react accordingly. The idea behind these names is to be unambiguous and easily recognisable, and in that regard, some of them sound pretty strange, such as fishpot or codling which prevents them being accidentally used in regular conversation and confusing people. Some of them are also the source of some uh, propaganda and uh, 
light horseplay between the US and USSR, who famously hated the name Fishbed for their at that time state-of-the-art fighter interceptor, the MiG-21. Other insulting names include the likes of Frogfoot, Midget, Faithless or Clank. Clankers. And for YouTube reasons, I'm not even going to talk about the MiG-15. Why? Well, because it was called the Fag- they aren't all so petty, however, with many relatively unassuming names like Mainstay or Cossack, and aircraft that were particularly well respected by NATO received more flattering names. The Soviet Union, in fact, were reportedly quite taken with Fulcrum, the NATO reporting name for their formidable air defense fighter, the MiG-29, to the point where some Soviet pilots even started calling it by that name. Now the thing is, as I said before, the Russians don't often come up with quote-unquote official names for their aircraft in the same way that America or Britain do, but even when they have, such as the Su-25 Grach, meaning Rook, or the M4 Molot, which translates to Hammer, these handles are not used by NATO. Even Western aircraft exported to the USSR with pre-existing names, such as the P-63 King Cobra or B-25 Mitchell, were actually given new reporting names, as was the Chinese JH-7, named Flying Leopard in Chinese, but known to NATO as Flounder. The reason for this is that these names, while odd, are not random. While in the US arsenal, all fighters receive designations starting with F, like the F-15, and bombers B, like the B-2, Russian and Chinese fighters all receive reporting names that start with the letter F. Fishbed, Fantan, Fulcrum, and Flanker, while their bombers receive names starting with B. So whether it's Aleutian's IL-28, Tupolev's Tu-16, or the Myasyshev M4 Molot, they'll receive names such as Beagle, Badger, and Bison, respectively. Helicopters, likewise, are given names starting with H, so Hound, Hind, or Havoc, while commercial or cargo transport aircraft such as the Aleutian IL-76 or the late Antonov AN-225 Maria are given names such as Candid or Cossack. Lastly comes miscellaneous aircraft, such as the IL-78 Midas, an aerial refueling tanker, and Russian Airborne Warning and Control, or AWACS, Reconnaissance, Research and Training aircraft are also given names starting with M, like Mainstay for the Beriev A-50 AWACS, Max for the Yakovlev 18 Trainer aircraft, or Mystic, which is the reporting name for the Myasyshev M55 Experimental High Altitude Research Aircraft, kind of like the X-29s or X-48s flown by NASA. A side note for those of you who are interested, reporting names are not assigned, at least at this stage, for Russian or Chinese drones like the Orion, though I'm not sure as to why. Oh, and the Yak-130's name is uh, Mittens. What are you supposed to do with this information? I don't know. What all this does is align all Russian or Chinese aircraft, regardless of their domestic names or designations, with NATO's designation scheme. So as soon as you hear a name like Firebird over the radio, you know the aircraft is a fighter class. While if you hear Blinder, well, comment below. What type of target do you think it is? This means that the common names for the attack helicopters Ka-50 and Ka-52, Black Shark and Alligator respectively, are actually English translations of the Russian names for these machines, while their NATO reporting names are Hokum A and Hokum B. Some aircraft even get multiple designations, such as the Yakovlev Yak-28, which is known to NATO as the Firebar or Brewer for its fighter-slash-interceptor and bomber variants respectively, as well as Maestro for both its electronic warfare and trainer variants. On the other hand, some names are used for multiple different but closely related aircraft, such as Fitter, the name for the Su-7 fighter bomber which was also carried across to the Su-17. Flogger for both the MiG-23 and its ground attack version, the MiG-27, and nowhere is this more obvious than in the Flanker family, which consists of the Su-27, 30, 33, and 35, the experimental Su-37, plus the PLAs J-11, J-15, and J-16, built by Shenyang. 
In this case, each new iteration, which keeps the same base name, receives a letter suffix to designate variant, just like the two hokums we just mentioned. In this regard, the SU-33 is known as flanker D, the SU-35 as flanker E, while flanker L and flanker X2 are for their Chinese modifications. That number two is an outlier, by the way, with the only other place I can think of it being used being the MiG-27M, which is known as Flogger J, and MiG-27K upgrade being called Flogger J2. And there's also the Flanker L Plus for the twin-seat variants of the J-11B, a sign which has never been used for any other aircraft to my knowledge. Even the MiG-21, with its dozens of variants spread over three or four generations and across multiple countries, received single-letter suffixes, such as Fishbed C for the MiG-21 F-13, Fishbed F for the second-generation PFM model, or Fishbed L for the MiG-21 BIS. Here though, the MiG-21 S, M, N, and SMT are all known simply as Fishbed J with no further letter or symbol suffix, despite being noticeably different variants with different capabilities. Meanwhile, the MiG-21 BIS was actually referred to as both Fishbed L and Fishbed N, depending on which autopilot it had, and honestly, I've no idea why. Twin-seat trainer versions of the MiG-21 were known as Mongols. Likewise, trainer versions of the MiG-15, IL-28, and Yak-17 were known as Midget, Mascot, and Magnet, respectively. But on the other hand, the Su-25's trainer variants simply got the name Frogfoot B, and the MiG-23U trainer got the name Flogger C. Again, I'm unsure why, and it almost seems random. NATO also screwed up by giving the Yak-30 jet trainer the name of Magnum, which you may remember from this video is the brevity callout for the launch of an anti-radiation missile like the AGM-88 Harm. Since the Yak-30 never entered production or service, this isn't a major issue, but it is an interesting point, since the reporting names are meant to be words that would never have cause to be used otherwise to avoid confusion. These names obviously aren't designed to be descriptive of the aircraft they're assigned to, at least not in general. Though with the IL-80 Max Dome, you can kind of see where they got the name from, as with some of the helicopters. And the Su-34, an enlarged flanker with a side-by-side twin-seat cockpit arrangement built for ground attack, likely received the handle of fullback because of its enlarged dorsal section. Some names are also selected based on role, such as the transport helicopter Yak-24, known as Horse, or the Beriev A-40 seaplane, known as Mermaid. You may also notice that despite it being a dedicated ground attack aircraft, the name Frogfoot would seem to denote the Su-25 Gratch as a fighter aircraft, definitely not its role. The same being true for the Su-24 Fencer. While these types of aircraft typically get designations starting with A in the US, such as the A6 Intruder or A10 Warthog, the reason the Su-24 and Su-25 are denoted like fighters in the NATO reporting scheme is likely because of the air-to-air -air missiles they carry in self-defense. You want to make sure your pilots are keeping that in mind when they engage a target like an Su-25. The last factor of these reporting names is the distinctions between propeller-driven or jet aircraft. Props like the Lovochkin LA-11, Antonov An-12, or Tupolev Tu-4, a reverse-engineered B-29, will always receive single-syllable names, such as Fang, Cub, or Bull, while jets received names with two syllables, such as the J-10 Firebird or the Tu-160 Blackjack. Keep in mind that this does not refer to piston or turbine power as a turboprop aircraft is still denoted with a single-syllable reporting name, like the Tu-95 Bear. As far as helicopters go, I've not been able to see any sort of pattern or rule set. Both attack and utility helicopters can have either one or two-syllable names, and it's nothing to do with engines, rotors, or weapons either. But if somebody does know of any sort of process behind the naming of Russian and Chinese helicopters, please let me know in the comments down below. Okay class, please open up your textbooks to chapter 2. Yes, there will be a test. As well as aircraft, NATO also assigns reporting names to Russian and Chinese missile systems, radars, and submarines. 
The naming scheme for radars appears to follow no real rhyme or pattern, with names like Fansong for the fire control radar of the S-75 surface-to-air missile, Scrum Half for the search and track radar of the Tor or Square Pair for the S-200, Spin Scan for the Sapphire radar of the MiG-21 aircraft, and Land Roll for the radar of the 9K33 OSA. Each of these are two word names, meaning tombstone or gravestone, search radars for the S-300 and S-400 are spelled as two words, and most just try to be as different as possible. This is so that radar warning receiver systems on board NATO aircraft can display the name as a two-letter abbreviation, such as BB for the Big Bird radar of the S-300, though funnily enough, aircraft are always represented on RWRs by their numerical designation so 21 for the MiG-21, or 30 for the Su-30, and SAM systems themselves are represented differently again, which we'll go into in a moment. Russian submarines received names corresponding to the NATO phonetic alphabet, such as Tango, Kilo, or Zulu, until the 1980s, where the system was switched to using Russian words like Akula, meaning shark. Russia did give names to their classes of submarines, in fact Akula was given to another class, but NATO once again ignores these, and the Russian submarine class named Akula in Russian is designated as the Typhoon class by the NATO system. Chinese submarines are named for Chinese dynasties, like Jin, Han, or Yuan. Now when it comes to missile systems, these get two designations, one alphanumerical, and one name that follows a similar system to the aircraft, where the first letter of the name tells you what kind of missile is being referred to. For example, air-to-air -air missiles like the R-3, a copy of the M9B Sidewinder, or R-77, Russian equivalent to the M120 Amram, get alphanumerical designations starting with AA for air-to-air, -air, and reporting names to match. The R-3 missile is designated the AA-2 Atoll, while the R-77 is designated AA-12 Ada. Some, but not all, Chinese missiles receive unique designations as well, starting with CHAA, such as the CHAA-7 ADS for the PL-12, or CHAA-10 Abaddon for the PL-15. Anti-tank missiles, or ATGMs, get alphanumerical designations starting with AT, but reporting names starting with S, denoting their use as a surface-to-surface -surface missile. An example would be the AT-3 Sagar, NATO's name for the Malyutka, AT-7 Saxhorn for the Metis, or AT-14 Spriggan for the Cornet. Surface-launched ballistic missiles like the Tochka, Iskander, or RS-28 Sarmat nuclear ICBM also receive S names like the famous Scud series, as well as their alphanumerical designations starting with SS, such as SS-21 Scarab for the Tochka, or SS-26 Stone for the Iskander. Interestingly, the RS-28 is currently the only missile, at least as far as I'm aware, where the NATO name matches the Russian, SS-30 Sarmat, though some sources refer to it as Satan II, after the earlier SS-18 Satan reporting name for the R-36M which the Sarmat was built to replace. One thing America does differently to the rest of NATO in this regard is that when a missile is ship-launched rather than ground-launched, it will actually receive a different alphanumerical designation, such as SSN-12 Sandbox or SSN-19 Shipwreck for the P-500 Basalt and P-700 Granite missiles respectively, where N stands for Naval, as well as the SSN-27 Sizzler for the caliber cruise missiles that have been used extensively against Ukraine. As before, Chinese missiles receive the designations starting with CHSS or CHSSN in the US for naval iterations, such as the CHSS-22, no name as of yet, for the DF-17 hypersonic ballistic missile. Air-to-surface missiles receive alphanumerical designations starting with AS, but reporting names starting with K for the Russian designation Kha, spelled KH in English. Examples would be the AS-10 Karen for the KH-25, there are so many jokes I could make, or AS-4 Kitchen for the KH-22 anti-ship missile. Anti-radiation missiles like the KH-31 or KH-59 are treated the same way, designated AS-17 Krypton and AS-13 King Bolt, respectively, as are air-launched cruise missiles like the KH-55, named AS-15 Kent.
The last category is surface to air missiles, which received designations starting with SA for surface to air, but reporting names that start with the letter G for ground to air, to distinguish them from the ATGMs and ballistic missiles. The SA-2 guideline is NATO's designation for the S-75 missile made famous in the Vietnam War, while SA-11 Gadfly is the name for the book system. There is no distinction made between self-propelled SAM systems and stationary ones, or between medium to long-range SAMs like the SA-3 Goa, named for the S-125, and short-range SAMs like Strela or Igla, designated SA-13 Gopher and SA-18 Grouse, respectively. There are different designations though for significantly improved variants of SAMs such as SA-10 Grumble, SA-12 Gladiator or SA-20 Gargoyle, all names for variations of the S-300 air defence system. The S-400 on the other hand is designated SA-21 Growler. These numbers are how SAM systems show up on NATO aircraft's radar warning receiver systems, so an SA-6 would show up as simply a number 6, or SA-8 with the number 8, though separated radar systems like the Tombstone, Gravestone, Big Bird or Clamshell will show up as their letter abbreviations as mentioned earlier. Again, America gives separate naval designations for ship-launched SAMs, while keeping the same reporting name. For example, the S-125, when fired by a ship, isn't known to Americans as SA-3 Goa, but SA-N-1 Goa, and the TOR missile, known as SA-15 Gauntlet in its ground-based version, is referred to as SA-N-9 Gauntlet by the US in its naval form. Similarly, the 2S6 Tunguska is known as the SA-19 Grayson, but the Kashtan Seawiz based on it, fitted to the Admiral Kuznetsov or Kirov class battlecruisers, is known as SAN-11 Grayson to the US, and is actually called CADS N1 Kashtan to the rest of NATO. Yeah, good job avoiding confusion there guys, well done. I'm not actually sure what CADS N1 means, but I'm gonna hazard a guess it means either close-in air defense system or combination air defense system, as Kashtan features both rapid-fire guns and missiles. Alright, well, that was a lot of information, but with all this in mind, let's test you again. What kind of system is the AS-24 Killjoy? Since the dissolution of the Soviet Union and improving relations between Russia and the West, names have gotten decidedly less spiteful and more respectful. For example, the Sukhoi Su-57, Russia's fifth generation fighter, or Pantsir SAM systems, despite the massive gaping flaws in their design, received the names Felon and Greyhound respectively, which I think most people will agree sounds uh, pretty good, pretty badass. On the flip side, the J-20 Mighty Dragon, China's fifth generation aircraft, doesn't have an official name yet, but some sources have stated that the most likely choice will be Fagin, and the Sukhoi LTS, commonly called Su-75, and MiG-41 may also get more scathing names due to souring relations thanks to the war in Ukraine. The Bolava missile deployed on Russia's newest Borai class submarines, as well as the Verba, Sosna and S-350 Vitez SAM systems also don't have names yet, and using the rules we've established, comment below what you think they should be named. To recap, NATO reporting names encode information about aircraft or missile systems for NATO forces to immediately recognize, without having to memorize Russian or Chinese designation schemes. Aircraft are named with the first letter corresponding to ROL, F for fighters, B for bombers, etc, with single syllable names for props and two syllables for jets. Missiles have both an alphanumerical designation, such as SS for surface to surface, or AA for air to air, as well as a corresponding reporting name based on a similar system, with A names for air to air missiles, S names for surface to surface, and to separate them, G rather than S names for surface to air missiles, and K rather than A names for air to surface. Congratulations, you passed the class, meaning you're now fully ready for World War 3. Go on, get out there, champ. 
I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video, which ended up being longer and more information heavy than I expected. I want to give a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters and YouTube members by the way for supporting this channel and allowing us to make videos like this, as well as Air Models for partnering with the channel. I'm pretty sure every single aircraft mentioned in this video has one if not multiple models on their store in different sizes and price points, so be sure to check them out as it supports the channel tremendously. It also supports us if you leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about future videos, and leave a comment down below telling me your favourite of these reporting names. I think mine would have to be either Firebar for the Yak-28P Interceptor, or King Bolt for the KH-59, that just sounds freaking awesome. Anyway, thank you all for watching, have a good one, and until next time, I'll catch you lads and lasses on the battlefield. Thank you to all our supporters on Patreon for making this video possible, with a special thanks to Mo, Ian Anderson, University, Dean Winger, Sukoshi Tiger, Captain Fubar, Dragon of the West, Dagger68, and Loudon Donny. If you like this video, I hope you subscribe and check out our other content, and if you really like what we do here, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. And thanks for watching. Beautiful, fantastic. I love the controls of these old aircraft. The new ones, having the screens, does look like it saves you a lot of trouble, but <laughs> these old aircraft are so beautiful. I can't get enough of them. There's another, oh, sorry. There's another meteor out of here. Can't get in that one. This is a complete exhibit. And we can only get in. Oh my goodness, I can't get out. <laughs>